Yo, what's up, Graham Bluers? Hope you're doing well. This guide will encompass everything I found relating to Yodarha from the basics that you might know if you've been playing Yoda already, to even some interesting tech and synergy I found that will be at the end of the video. I will have timestamps for the sections you may or may not care about, so feel free to skip around to what you're looking for. I'd just like to highlight that some sections will discuss unique interactions with some of his moves, and some quality of life to make his playstyle less complicated for newcomers to the Jedi Master. If you found this guide helpful and want more character guides, I'd appreciate a subscribe. With all that being said, let's learn the ways of the Force. Yodarha is a ramping DPS character in Reeling. His main gimmick comes from building up his triple shroud marks to then activate amplified effects on his skills. These can range from extra hits or damage to team-wide buffs if you like helping others. This retired swordsman really shows his age since he starts off slow. Having to complete a 6 hit combo for his first stack, but each subsequent combo gets shorter, causing you to get shroud stacks faster and faster, until his combo literally becomes 2 button presses. Yodarha can be a lot of fun. He's a fluid character to play as you're constantly doing something, and he doesn't really have downtime periods aside from bosses being out of reach. The idea with Yoda is to find ways to get to 3 triple shroud marks as soon as possible before firing off your skills. There are a few different ways to go about this. The simplest would be to just constantly do his basic attack combo, finishing it off with his special attack, which will grant you brief invincibility on activation, giving you one triple shroud mark at the end. You can also chain into his combo finisher from skills. So if you use a skill at three shroud marks, you'll consume all of them, but then you can go into his combo finisher and get one back. Each time you use the combo finisher, you'll shorten the combo string by one move. It doesn't matter how you get to the combo finisher, just that you're using it. So in other words, if you wanted to, you could equip 4 attack skills, use a combo finisher after each one, and once they're on cooldown, you can go into his shortened 2 hit combo right after, and keep doing that. You can use a mix of skills and basic attack chains, whatever floats your boat. He has a very freestyle combat flow in general. Link attacks will give you a triple shroud mark upon activation and let you also go straight into your combo finisher, so incorporating this into your rotation whenever it's up is an easy way to secure 2 triple shroud marks and shortens your combo time. The biggest downside to Yodarha is if your combo finisher doesn't connect on the final hit, that means no triple shroud marks for you, buddy. Which might not seem like a big deal, but in cases where a boss is highly mobile like Mana Garmer, you might find yourself struggling to get triple shroud marks when he's hopping around a ton, or even get to the shortened combo which is where Yodarha can struggle. He has a very high uptime when he sticks to the boss like Lou, but if you're having to reposition through running away and stopping the combo, then you're back to square one. You'll have to ramp back up, which is where some players may find difficulties in playing Yoda. Ways to alleviate this would be by using things such as his Gap Closer skill Awakening. It's on a short cooldown, so you can use it to open up fights and have it up if the boss repositions far away. Another way to keep the combo up if you need to reposition is through dodging. You can chain multiple dodges together and still have the combo up for situations where you feel like the boss may be moving around a lot. If you want that 100% uptime on the shorter combo where you can, running improved dodge might not be a bad idea here. You only need one sigil to max it out as well, so if you get it as a sub trade on another sigil, it's decent to run this for defensive purposes and some Yoda quality of life. Another way to get back into Yodarha's quick combo is by using his built-in parry, which is tied to the special attack or lunge button. The lunge button serves as a gap closer when used either in the middle of a combo string or when just running around the battlefield. You can cancel into the lunge after any hit of the combo string except the Beyblade Slam move. Once you're in that animation, the lunge will change into his combo finisher, which is what gives you a triple shroud mark upon the final hit. When your combo becomes just the Beyblade Slam into combo finisher, you won't be able to use his parry until you stop attacking for a bit. This will reset your combo route, so in most cases you won't want to do this, unless there's a hit incoming you want to ignore with a parry, guard, or dodge. At the start of Yodarha's lunge, there is a circle that will flash. This is what indicates the parry window. You'll want to use the parry right before an attack hits you. Upon successful activation, you'll get yourself a supplementary damage buff, which will be important to note, and it takes you straight to the final version of his combo chain, the 2 hit combo. The timing is similar to that of a perfect dodge. I'd recommend you practice it on the training dummy to get used to the timing, as this is going to be important for the tech section of the video. That's everything you need to know to play Yodarha well enough in boss fights. In Horde missions, I didn't find him feeling too good to play personally, but you can totally run him fine, and he does good. On single targets or multi-boss fights where he can ramp up and wail on them is where he really shines in my opinion. I'll do a quick breakdown of his skills, what I personally run on him, and why. 
Awakening serves as an extra gap closer that does more hits and the more triple shroud marks you have. Flashing Void is a 13 hit combo where you need to press the skill button again after each hit to continue. This goes up to 13 hits like the combo states, but you'll only need to do 11 button presses to finish the final few hits. You'll want to time each button press once the current attack hits the boss. You can also use this skill as a form of traversal in horde fights to hit an enemy then bounce around like a ping pong ball to others. The attacks of Flashing Void don't need to hit anything to keep the chain going as well, so if the boss moves you can chase after him with this move as it's going on. Empty Mist is the move where Yodarho throws out a flurry of blade strikes around him and finishes with one strong hit. Just hold down the button to get all the hits in. This move can be held for longer depending on how many triple shroud marks you have. Hymn of the Hundreds is arguably one of his best skills to me. This will provide you with mirror image upon activation. If you have 3 triple shroud marks and use this ability, you can give your entire team mirror image which is huge for allowing everyone to play a bit more selfishly. For those who don't know, mirror image is what gives you the blurry effect on your character sometimes and makes it so attacks will just face through you while it's active. If you're not the Yodaro player, it can be kinda hard to tell when it's active during the thick of combat, but if you look at your health bar and see the little green dudes icon, then you know you don't really have to worry about dodging out of stuff for a bit. Trice Blade is an attack buff that has an increased effect depending on how many triple shroud marks you have, ranging from 25% with no marks, 100% with 3 marks. In most cases, I wouldn't recommend this one only because if you're already hitting damage cap, what's the point? It's not a team-wide buff, this only applies to Yodarha as well, so there's no real synergy here. Perpetual Rotation is an interesting skill I've been messing around with. This makes it so if you aren't at max triple shroud marks, then it will put you at 3 marks, but if you are at 3 marks, then you can instantly reset your other 3 cooldowns. This has cool synergy obviously with his DPS skills, as you can reset them and get more damage off, but you can also use it as a mirror image reset when it runs out for yourself or your teammates giving you a longer period to play recklessly. I found fun in using this skill and without it. Definitely a good effect, but I wouldn't call it a must-have unless you want to be very bursty and get more damage off. Tit for Tat is Yodarha's parry skill. This will grant you 3 triple shroud marks if you perfectly time it. The more marks you have when you use it causes the skill to do more damage, so if you use it at 3 marks, you'll get the most damage out of it and your shroud marks will be back for free. I haven't messed around with this skill too much myself, only because Yodarho already has a built-in parry. I do see the value of it, so if you're into a full parry playstyle, mess around with it. But I prefer some of his other skills. Finally, we have Sky Shatter. The scale of the move and damage go up depending on the amount of triple shroud marks you have when you use it. That's all of his skills. For my personal loadout, I like running Awakening as a gap closer, but also because I can instantly go into the combo finisher after using it. This skill also has a really short cooldown, so you'll have it up when you need it. The second skill I'm running is Flashing Void. This is Yodarha's highest damage move. It is good when the boss is locked in place or stunned, but I do find that timing when you want to use it is part of the struggle due to maybe a link attack going off or the boss moves and you miss some of your damage. It's a great skill for sure, but having the patience to know when to use it is good to master. The ability has built-in iframes as long as you're continuing the combo, so aside from bosses going into overdrive and pushing you back, you can ignore stuff and get this skill off. Empty Mist is an interesting one because it is just a DPS skill at first glance, but this move can also serve as a way to keep link time going because of how fast it hits. For those who don't know, each hit will give you a little extra link time. For a fast hitting move like this, you'll be able to top up the bar yourself for a bit, which is a nice way to squeeze out some more DPS time for your team. Finally, I'm using Hymn of the Hundreds for the team utility. Just like with Percival, I do enjoy having some form to assist others, so this helps a teammate that's maybe struggling with attack patterns, or before they're about to get hit by a strong attack, you can assist this and save their life. They probably won't know you're the reason why they didn't get one shot, but I'd say that's in style for the retired legendary swordsman. Aside from Trice Blade, there is a good argument to run each of the other skills, so feel free to experiment with them, but this is my personal build and why. For weapons, get his Terminus Weapon Swordfish if you can, as Terminus is best in slot for all characters. If you don't have this and are unsure if you want to grind for it, then you can totally use the crit weapon Higurashi in the meantime. Upgrade his others to 150 if you see yourself playing him for a long while or want to get the most out of him. Currently, I only have his weapons capped at 125 because 150 requires Silver Centrums and I'm broke using those to fully awaken his weapon. For overmastery, I'd recommend trying to get crit rate, normal attack damage cap up, 
and skill damage cap up. The last slot can be whatever. As for sigil builds, you can of course go the standard 4 damage caps, 2 raw damage, then some link together, and the other 5 could be quality of life sigils of your choosing such as Aegis, Potion Hoarder, Guts, etc. Get his unique sigil, Swordmaster's Awakening, as this has a 70% chance to not consume triple shroud marks when you use skills, which is big, allowing you to chain skill after skill when it works. The other sigil just gives you a 30% attack buff for each combo finisher, but resets after the combo ends. This could be good if you want to slot more QOL and play into the ramping DPS style. Even better if you can get 5 plus sigils that have these already on them. People will tell you to run War Elemental and Supplementary Damage if you have them. I do have one Supplementary Damage, and while it is more damage, I feel like the damage I do now is good enough for me, so I'm choosing to not run that. I still haven't gotten War Elemental, but if you do have it, I would definitely run it, as that's a non-conditional 20% extra DPS, which I think is awesome for everything. Supplementary damage while being extra DPS I think is a bit more subjective on it if you want it or not, since it doesn't always proc anyway. It's good for fast hitting characters like Yodarha, so this one is up to you. The only other things to note are his SBA will do more damage if you have 3 triple shroud marks on activation, and during link time you will always have 3 triple shroud marks so you can spam his skills with no worry. With all that out of the way, I think this is a good time to talk about the Yodarha tech I cooked up. If somebody else knew about this already, hey, you're just a better Yoda player than I, but I couldn't find this in any videos or posts, so I think maybe I'm the only one who knows about this currently. Essentially, when you use a parry on Yodarha, aside from getting you to the final stage of a short hit combo, I found it a little lackluster because it doesn't proc invincibility for the duration of the move, and while the combo finisher does have invincibility, it's only there for the start of the animation. If you're not familiar, there's a guard cancel technique in Relink that allows you to dodge right after blocking a move to proc the invincibility for free. It's free because if the invincibility doesn't go off, you still guarded the attack, so there's no risk of taking damage like maybe with a normal dodge. Now if you take this concept and apply it to Yodarha, you get what I'm coining as Yoda cancels. Right after triggering a parry with a special attack button, wait for the sword to connect with your opponent. When you see the hit went off, dodge immediately and you'll get iframes as if you did a perfect dodge instead. You'll know you got the hit off because you'll get the supplementary damage buff. This might not seem too crazy on first glance, but this synergizes so well with Yodarha and gives him a form of comfort that I was used to on Percival with charge parries, but with the added benefit of being able to make a whole build around this concept. See, if you don't know, while characters like Percival have a charge parry, there are no sigils to increase the invulnerability, and there's not really a point in trying to dodge when the parry goes off because you don't get anything else out of it. Yodarha, on the other hand, can go straight into his max combo after a successful parry. Dodging right after the parry not only gets you to his max combo and the supplementary damage off his parry, but now you have invincibility coming from the dodge, allowing you to fire off skills or combos without having to worry about being hit out of them or taking damage. Take a look at the training dummy. If you have reactive Sir Barrel Dawn, then sure, your parry will go through and interrupt the enemy, but this wouldn't work on bosses with multi-hit moves because they'd still hit you through the parry either one-shotting you if you're playing with low HP or just knocking you away. With Yoda cancels, you can just completely bypass that risk as long as you hit the parry and benefit it from invincibility iframes. If you love high skill cap mechanics and playstyles, I'd mess around with this because I found it really satisfying to pull off in fights. Considering the tech revolves around his parry, which isn't the main damage dealer, but rather gets you to your max combo finisher with supplementary damage, you can build up triple shroud marks fast and pop high damage skills like they're nothing on top of being completely invulnerable. Obviously you need to keep proccing the parry to maintain the invincibility, but because it sends you straight to the max combo version, there's no downtime risk once you get the hang of parrying bosses. With all that being said, i just like to go over my build. I'm calling the build Dodge Master, but the name itself doesn't really matter. With Yoda's Terminus weapon, damage caps, and your two damage sigils, you'll be able to hit his damage cap and focus on defensive quality of life stuff like Nimble Defense and Nimble Onslaught. Both of these sigils grant you extra seconds of invincibility that stack together, so you can really play into Yoda's parry dodge style and just be invincible like you just picked up a star. Aside from defensive utility, I am running Cascade and Quick Cooldown as this helps the uptime of Yodarha's skills, 
and considering you can ignore mechanics with this tech, I find it helpful. By no means is my build best in slot, but it's fun to me, so that's what I'm going with. The default invincibility is around 5 seconds. With level 14 of Nimble Onslaught, you get an extra 2 seconds, so around 7 in total. With Nimble Onslaught and Nimble Defense, you can get up to 11 seconds of invincibility if both are maxed out. With my current setup, I'm only at 10 seconds, but honestly, even with just one of these slotted in for an extra 2 or 3 seconds of invincibility, it helps out a ton and can lead to some greedy but rewarding plays for Yoda players. So try it out and let me know what you think. The beauty of the technique is that once you've pulled it off, you don't have to risk a dodge into an attack for continued invincibility. As long as you're in the middle of your combo chain by hitting the Beyblade move after dodging around a bit, you can continue with Yoda's combo finisher. Of course, if you end up backing off or not being able to attack the boss, then you're back to square one like normal. But with the parry skip and free invincibility, you can easily get back into the thick of things with Yoda and dish out crazy damage where others might need to dodge or follow mechanics. I've by no means mastered this tech, and it might have more applications than even I'm showing here, but hey, that's something you could discover while playing Yodarha yourself. What are you waiting for, Fisher God? Get on out there.